Good evening. My name is Joe Defendis, and I'm chair of the Norman Howard Board of Trustees. It's my great pleasure to welcome you this evening to this special event. This is the Norman Howard School's 39th graduation ceremony. We're here this evening to celebrate the class of 2023 and the hard work they and their families put forth to get to this milestone. I leave here this evening, oh, I know it wasn't easy, but you did it. We hope that you, as you leave this evening to start your next chapter, that you will remember what your teachers taught you and use those tools to help you find continued success. On behalf of the Norman Howard Board of Trustees, congratulations. Good evening. I'm Rosemary Hodges, the Norman Howard School Director of Education. And I and Renee Weedor, our Director of Students, have the pleasure of introducing you to the class of 2023. Before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge a few individuals who are here with us this evening. So let's take a moment tonight, first to recognize a very special person, one of the founders of the Norman Howard School, Madeline C. Roding. We are gathered tonight ce celebrating achievement, resilience, and success because of Madeline. She and our school's founders had a vision and a foundational belief that all children can succeed when given the opportunity and support to do so. For 43 years, this belief has infused all aspects of our work. Thank you, Madeline, for your many years of involvement and enduring dedication. Also, we would like to acknowledge the CEO of Education Success Found Foundation, Joe Martino, and members of the Norman Howard School Board of Trustees. We are happy to have you here with us tonight to celebrate the achievements of our graduates. <laughs> Finally, we'd like to recognize a very important and special member of our community who has decided to start the, the next adventure of his life. Since 1988, Chuck Hockenberger has been a faculty member and has always kept an eye and his heart on the pulse of the Norman Howard School family, making sure that our culture stays intact, people are recognized for their efforts, and that we stay the course for the students and staff. Chuck epitomizes the definition of a true gentleman and is a role model for all of us as we go forward working together and meeting the needs of our students. Thank you, Chuck. Now we have a presentation by Dalen Bump, member of the class of 2023. I want to recognize Mr. K. I know this is supposed to be about someone else, but before I honor this person, I want to say that none of this would be possible without you overseeing the entire senior class and all the senior activities. You put your heart and soul into each and every one of us, and I just want to take a quick moment to appreciate you and say thank you. would like to thank an individual that made our senior year one to remember, Miss O'Donnell. Her positive words whenever we needed a picking up and the time and energy she dedicated for our senior trip. And not to mention the Disney app and our wonderful senior banquet. 
made our senior year a very special year. Thank you, Ms. O'Donnell, and we will miss you. Thank you, Jalen. So each year, seniors select someone who's had an impact on their lives to speak for them at graduation. So I'm gonna call on each graduate and their speaker to come to the podium so the speaker can share some insight regarding their soon to be high school graduate. So first of all, we have Tavon Akil Andrews, and speaking for him is Brigette Coates. Good evening. Before you stand, my name is No, my sign is No, my number is No. <laughs> that is how I was addressed by Tavion when he was my reading student when he first entered Norman Howard in the fifth grade. <laughs> he had no interest in sitting up front with his classmates. He had no interest in doing whatever it was we were doing. When I called on him, he would just say, nope. <laughs> so I began to say, or sing, my name is No, which made Tavion smile. I hooked him. He knew that I did, in fact, have his number. Eventually, he began participating in class, <laughs> moved to the front of the room, and lessons and reading seriously began. He began to accept and trust that Norman Howard was the right school for him and that teachers truly understood the type of student he was. By the end of that year, we were making pinatas and stuffing them with candy. And if you know Tavion, he has a sweet tooth especially for Skittles. <laughs> in seventh grade, I was Tavion's reading teacher again, and at this point, he had become quite comfortable at Norman Howard. Tavion was easily distracted by his classmate, where unwanted behaviors developed in class to the point where I had to come up with some kind of behavior management system. That was when Tavion came up with the brilliant idea of the wall of good positive motivation that would allow them to earn a reward. This gives evidence to how Tavion is a solution seeker along with his positive outlook on life. He does not perseverate on the ne negative, rather he keeps it real with this easygoing manner and just keeps moving forward one day at a time. Various teachers have helped Tavion on his academic journey, some of whom he made personal connections with and I'm including myself on this list. Tavion has always been a relationship kid, a kid who after vetting out trustworthy teachers would occasionally reveal snippets of his life which showed who he truly was, an inquisitive and thoughtful young man. I became his advisor for 10th and 11th grade, which meant I had to keep track of him in more ways than one. Throughout Tay's high school career, it would have seemed that he had trouble finding his way to homeroom in the morning. <laughs> Some might say that he was directionally challenged. <laughs> I prefer to think of Tavion making his rounds, letting everyone know he was still in the building, and checking in on teachers that he had made connections with. Senior year, I had to let him fly the coop, as it were. However, often Tay would find himself in my doorway. I'd look at him, he'd look at me, I'd open my desk drawer and hand him a small bag of Skittles. <laughs> We'd exchange pleasantries, and that's all that he needed to get him through the day. Before you stands a soon-to-be graduated Tavion Andrews, a kind-hearted, humble, easygoing soul. In the fall, Tavion will be enrolled at Arc and Flame, the premier training facility in New York for welding, glass, and blacksmithing classes. Once he earns a certificate of completion, he will have many employment opportunities which will pave the way to a successful future. 
and before I become an ugly crier, <laughs> I want to say directly to you, Tay, how very proud I am of your accomplishments here at Norman Howard, and I'm going to miss you immensely. And I will keep Skittles tucked in the back of my drawer, just in case you find yourself at my door. Diane Williams will now speak for Dylan Baker. It's my pleasure to speak on Dylan's behalf tonight. He's very special to me. I've known Dylan since he was a baby, so I may have a few stories to tell. <laughs> The last couple of weeks, I asked many of his teachers and classmates to give me some words to describe him, as well as any memories or stories they wanted to share. Many of his friends describe him as kind, happy, easygoing, funny, friendly, witty, and competitive. They also have many nicknames like Dee Dee, Delilah, <laughs> Dilly Dilly, some that I can't mention up here, <laughs> Dalen. And he's also affectionately referred to as Crash Baker because of his love of NASCAR racing. He loves it so much that he spent one entire day navigating his way to classes by only taking left-hand turns. <laughs> he will especially be remembered for the daily milk carton towers he built with Caden during lunch period and his love of Michael Jackson songs. His best friend from Brighton, his name is QP, had an opportunity to talk about Dylan at, at their sports banquet. And he stated, Dylan and I have been friends since second grade. We share the same bus, the same teachers. We're now teammates on the cross country team. And over the years, there's one thing that has never changed about Dylan, his height. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> his teachers described Dylan as exuberant and joyful, but mainly responsible, respectful, mature, and a true rule follower. Sometimes his love for racing, though, trumped his moral compass. Like the times he would watch Speed Racer during his personal finance class, when Mrs. Ryan was busy teaching in front of the room. Or how he spent his entire junior year sprinting in the halls in order to beat Lauren to their next class, until they finally got caught by Miss Granville. <laughs> One teacher described him as Clark Kent. She said he has an inner strength. He's mild-mannered on the outside, but strong on the inside. Some, however, like me, say he might border on stubbornness. As a youngster, his stubbornness often got him in the timeout chair. I remember going to visit him one day, and his mom gave me the heads up that they were trying to teach him the importance of sharing. Dylan was about five years old, and he was going through a cheese doodle stage. His mom, Kim, said to me, watch, watch this guy. Dylan, can I please have a cheese doodle? No, he replied emphatically. Dylan, you need to share your cheese doodles. No, he cried. Then at least give Di a cheese doodle. No. This battle went on for several minutes, and finally she said, you cannot play with Di until you share your cheese doodles. He looked at her all red in the face, handed me the bag, and said, you know, Mommy, you're good, but you're not great. <laughs> it was hard to keep it together. We were trying not to laugh at that, but. In Dylan's defense, he has become much more polite as he's matured, and it sounds much more like this. Hey, Dylan, how about sharing a cheese doodle? Mm, no, thank you. <laughs> how about eating your vegetables? Mm, no, thank you. Dylan, how about doing your global homework? No, thank you. <laughs> Dylan loves his snacks still, and his idea of the five main food groups consists of pizza, meatball subs, chocolate, garlic bread, and Coca-Cola. And of course, his organ milk. Dylan is an amazing young man. He's a true example of personal growth. Despite his witty sense of humor and friendly disposition, 
He actually is extremely introverted. So making the transition from his homeschool to Norman Howard was challenging for him. He has consistently stepped out of his comfort zone and has achieved so much. He has made the honor roll every year. He's a student host and ambassador. He gives tours, answers questions from prospective students and families. He was a member of the Brighton Cross Country and Track Team, where he was the top finisher in a meet early in his career. Based on his performance, his coach chose him to participate in a lead event. He finished 20th out of 179 runners. He went, and considering his height, that's probably, <laughs> I mean, you know, everybody has longer legs, you know. Um, he was a medal winner and his team finished in first place. He also received most improved for his team, qualified for sectionals, and he beat his personal record during one of his last meets. He's headed next year to Onondaga Community College to study cybersecurity and compete on the men's cross country team in the fall. If I had to give Dylan any words of wisdom, it would be to always put your faith in God. Know that God will carry you through all your challenges. Be grateful every day. Ask, how can I be of service today? Could you please? <laughs> how can I be of service today? Who can I help today? It's okay to not know what you want to do for your occupation. Eventually you will find your passion. Always keep your wonderful sense of humor. Let your light shine. And for the love of God, share your cheese doodles, Dylan. <laughs> Proud of you, love you. So Wayne Bump will now speak for Dalen Elizabeth Bump. All right, well, this one will be a lot faster than the last two. <laughs> Not much of a public speaker, but you're welcome. <laughs> so, Dave, what can I say? You're an amazing young lady after everything this world has thrown at you, especially in the last couple of months. You rose above it. <clears throat> and all you shine through bright as a person and academically. Your journey has just begun. I can't say it enough. I'm so proud of you, and I know you'll continue to grow and achieve your goals. Now go out there and get what you deserve. Speaking for Caden Chase is Philip Humphreys. things that I'm always uh, surprised by when I come up here is the fact that as I've gotten older I'm more and more using these so bear with me if I'm kind of moving like this. Um, I am honored and humbled in a lot of ways to speak on behalf of Kate and Chase tonight. In some ways this is kind of a bittersweet moment for me as having spoken many years ago for his sister Maddie at graduation I'm now speaking for a remarkable student whose journey began with me eight years ago. And as I was writing this out, it kind of gave me pause, for I realized with sadness that this fall will be the first time in years that I do not have a Chase child in my classes next year. But at the same time, I was thrilled because I realized this adventure that Caden has been on has culminated in the dedicated and poised young man that you see standing before you today. My first memories of Caden were as a young fifth grader in ski club. Uh, you know, Mr. Salufo and I, when we, when we do ski club with Mr. Koffenberger, we always we try to let the kids kind of sometimes, you know, go off on their own because we want to kind of gauge how they're going to do. And as we were getting ready to head out, I looked across the lodge and there was young Maddie helping this little kid get dressed with gear literally spread all over the lodge. And I looked over and I thought to myself, oh my God, Caden, you are a mess. <laughs> and, and as the years passed by with Caden and Ski Club, I, I saw him grow incredible in maturity and skill level. Although I began to discover that there were certain idiosyncrasies that Caden had with skiing. Some of them include his being the only student in all the years I've done it 
that I know who skis in his regular ski school uniform under his snow boots. And he is also the only student that I've ever had who skis with no hat and a golf shirt, regardless of the weather. That's it, he used to stop there. Therefore, by the time Caden became my advisee uh, in 11th grade, I already had a solid understanding of who he was, or so I thought. One of the things I quickly discovered was his encyclopedic knowledge of fish, particularly fishing, the sport, the art, as we would call it, of fishing in general, and how it interacts with his core subjects, such as the mathematical formula of two plus two equals? Fish. Fish, exactly. <laughs> uh, which I was never taught in school, but apparently does exist in Caden's world. And since I am a fan of the art of fishing as well, it became one of the many to topics that we talked about over the next two years, uh, as I was finally forced to admit that I was, in many ways, just a young Jedi Padawan learning at the feet of a true master, the fish whisperer, if you will. One of my hopes is still that someday, because he and I have talked about it for years now, that uh, we're going to be able to head out onto Lake Ontario or one of our smaller lakes and streams and to have time just to sit and throw a line out and fish together. Disney was another exp learning experience with Caden. Now, I've taken quite a few senior groups down over the years for that trip, but I've rarely been with a group of students who were bound and determined to hit Disney hard and squeeze every moment out of the experience. Caden and his posse were like a whirlwind that it was difficult at times for me to keep up with, particularly when it came to experiencing the Star Wars phenomena that exists at Disney Studio. His group was usually the first out the door and the last in at night, a testimony to his dedication and focus when he wants to set a goal, which is pretty amazing to me. But I guess since we are at school, we should talk a little bit about academics in general. And it is with the academic growth that I have been most impressed over the past two years. Caden is a student who never compromises in his learning. And although we can say that he has sort of a unique interpretation of time and space as it relates to due dates, uh, his skill levels have improved to the point that he is fully prepared for the rigors of a college environment. And so, Caden, we come to the end of your journey at NHS. In fishing terms, you have landed a lunker, the big prize in terms of your skills both as a student and a man. And as you set forth on your next fishing adventure, college, uh, remember that now that you now have the right fishing rod and lure, and it is up to you to lean back and cast that line with all of your might and land that next big fish that is waiting somewhere out there in the big blue water that is life. Congratulations on your graduation. Natalie Child will now speak for Nathaniel Justin Child. I'm Nathaniel's favorite aunt. In, in, in Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, he poses a theory that it takes 10,000 hours of practice to truly become a master at something. Nobody succeeds without innate talent, but ultimately achievement is talent plus preparation. He mentions Bill Gates, who is certainly naturally talented, but who also had access to technology way, way, way before he actually got into business. So he had lots of practice time. So I thought I'd briefly highlight some of the things Nathaniel has been practicing since a young age. Uh, he'll be glad my time is limited. Um, he t undertook a lengthy independent study in plumbing with a concentration in toilets. <laughs> there was a lot of work with locks and keys. I think at age six or seven, he had his own um, account at Historic House Park so he could go paw through the antique keys and see maybe what they went to. There was a very random security panel and alarm, sy alarm system phase. Uh, Grandma has a good story about that if you want to hear it. And forever there has been picking up garbage computers from the side of the road and bringing them into the kitchen to maybe fix them or maybe dismantle them somehow uh, in the basement with a hammer. <laughs> the house is full of uh, the debris from his studies. Um, Nathaniel, you're well on your way to success. You've been practicing a lot of things. If you end up making Bill Gates money and want to help out your old pal Aunt Natalie, that would be dope. <laughs> but it's much more important that you remain curious, you remain kind, and do things that make you proud. Congratulations.
Sarah Jalfo will now speak for Logan R. Gagan. I'm so honored to be giving this speech about Logan, even though you told me I was your second choice. <laughs> but for real, this is my first time speaking on behalf of a senior, and I don't take that lightly, and I couldn't be more proud of Logan. I met Logan when I started here five years ago. I remember thinking he was very tall, but to be fair, everyone is taller than me, even the fifth and sixth graders we have here. <laughs> And he explained to me that he had a rough previous experience with students in his other district, and he would love to call himself a cynical person. But it didn't take me long to see that underneath that witty humor, a love of debating, and to be honest, making his peers angry at times, was a wonderful student who just really needed a positive outlet. To my surprise, the following year, he asked me if he could join the Best Buddies Club, which I'm the faculty advisor for. I explained to him that this would be a club that would require him to be flexible, open to working with people with disabilities, and he'd really have to work on holding in that cynical personality. But he looked at me and said, I know I can do it if you let me. From then on, I saw this once shielded person blossom into an amazing adaptive social leader. I think he enjoyed his experience so much, he even asked if he could take on a leadership role as the Best Buddies chapter president, which he's had for the past two years. I've seen Logan change and take charge, speak in front of his peers, go out into the community and put himself out there, walking at the Best Buddies friendship walks, leading his group, and now reaching for your dreams and applying for Alfred State. But something even more amazing that I thought would never see happen was all the smiling pictures I saw of him with his classmates at the Disney senior trip. This is quite the accomplishment as I think of that little kid five years ago who lived to make his peers angry, <laughs> is now smiling and opening himself up to friendship and all the new possibilities for life. But his involvement in Best Buddies cannot take all the credit for his transformation. Logan has a wonderful supportive family and great teachers who understood what he needed along the way. I'm just so happy I was there from the beginning to see your growth. Logan, your family and your NHS family are so proud of you. My only last advice to you on your graduation day is, change can be scary, but you know what's scarier? Allowing fear to stop you from growing, evolving, and progressing. I just want to share with everyone my favorite quote that um, Logan told me, and I've actually kept it on my bulletin board for the past three years. He looked at me and said, Miss Jelfo, COVID is the longest friendship I've ever had. <laughs> I am happy to say that's no longer true. <laughs> and he has me, all his classmates, and all the teachers on his stage to be cheering him on for the rest of his life. Logan, you did it. <laughs> Congratulations, and I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Philip Humphreys will now speak for Lauren McKenna George. tonight to speak for Laura McKen Lauren McKenna, Lauren McKenna, I don't even know where that came from. Um, when I welcomed uh, Lauren into my homeroom in junior year as one of the three amigos consisting of her, Logan, and Caden, I had no idea it was the beginning of two years of pretty much nonstop laughs from the crazy artwork that they put up on my smart board, including the legendary Bob Rosso, Bob Rosso, to the questionable music selections that they had, their taste is a little bit different than mine, to the moments of sheer frustration as she proved herself a boggle master. It was an introduction into the mind of Lauren where you had a combination of focused dedication to academics and overcoming her learning challenges, 
linked to what I can only describe as an impish sense of humor. There is no doubt that she was the epitome of her nickname, Sassy George. <laughs> Lauren began calling me her school dad early in her junior year, and as a result, she kept me aware of what was going on in her life, which included volleyball, boyfriend, frustration with the college process, frustration with life, and whatever happened to be on her mind at the time. Often I felt that it was just my job to sit there and listen like I do with my own daughter. And as I listened, it became readily apparent that here was a person who moved throughout life really seeing the world around her. Lauren has a strong sense of right and wrong, and this comes through in her observations of life in general. She has a need to make connections with and help others while remaining steadfast in her connections with family. And as I got to know Lauren better, it became obvious to me that there were depths to her personality that many do not often see. She truly is one of the most naturally socially conscious students I've ever taught. As I wrote in her college recommendation, her innate kindness, spiritual faith, concern, and desire to understand and help the world around her is second nature to her personality. Whether it is helping to work with inner city housing, rehabilitation programs, doing mission work in Central America, or just working with a younger student that, might, that she might just see that seems like they're struggling. She's always searching for the connections that will raise awareness and bring people together. Sadly, Lauren, our journey together is coming to an end tonight as you step forth into a wider world. But since I am your school dad, I do get to go tell you one last Mr. H school anecdote. When I was younger, uh, not that that was that long ago, but when I was younger, uh, and I would get frustrated with the world, my mother, who is still to this day as Yankee practical with her religion as she is with everything in her life, used to say to me, she'd say, Phil, God's light exists in everybody. It's just that sometimes you gotta look a little bit closer to see it. But Lauren, I've never had to look for that in you. Your decency, caring, humor, dedication, and love for those around you shines forth in everything you do. And as you start your new adventure at college at FLCC in the fall, I have no doubt that the strength of purpose will continue with you. One of my favorite quotes has always been from the book of Timothy, where it says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Instead, set an example for the believers through your speech, behavior, love, and faith. And I challenge you, Lauren, to keep this ideal as you move forth in your life. Always remember to keep it classy. And don't just be a student. Be the person that tries to make the world a better place for everyone. Spread your joy and love of life throughout your family and your friends. I cannot speak for others, as you all well, well know I would never try to, but I know that for me, I am a better person for having known you. Congratulations on your graduation. Speaking for Dominic Daniel Getman is Ed Perdue. Hey everyone. As most of you know, I recently retired from Norman Howard, and many of these this year's senior class are the last students that I taught. Fifteen years ago tonight, I gave my first senior speech for DJ Dupre. Since then, I have given many senior speeches, but I thought those ended my retirement. I can't tell you how excited I was when Dominic contacted me this spring and asked me to be his speaker. I cannot think of a finer young man to be my last senior speech. Thank you for asking me, Dominic. But enough about me. Let's talk about this fine young man standing next to me. In the fall, Don will be attending Elford State and he'll be majoring in mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineers design, develop, build, and test. They deal with everything that moves from machines to the human body. I was Dominic's math teacher and advisor my last two years of teaching, and I remember in ninth grade, his parents told me, that Dominic is very engineering driven and mechanically inclined. He likes to build, create, assemble, and fix electronics and machines. Could Dominic not have picked a more perfect field to study in mechanical engineering? So Dominic's favorite movie is Guardians of the Galaxy, and his favorite character is Peter Quill, AKA Star Lord. 
Being in the fan of the movies myself and knowing Dominic, I believe he shares many of the qualities with the great Star Lord. Star Lord is a master strategist and a problem solver. He is unusually gifted at devising answers to various issues. In fact, he can do it on the run with little time to sit down and devise a strategy. When the chips are down, he can adjust and adopt his strategy in the middle of a situation. This sounds so much like Dominic to me. Although Star Lord, Star Lord fancies himself a lone wolf, he actually has a strong sense of family bond. There is little he wouldn't do to protect his fellow guardians. Family is very important to Dominic. Dominic has told me he likes to relax a lot with family and as a family like to visit historical and science-based places. Star Lord loves the 60s, 70s, and 80s, especially the music. Dominic's favorite song is a 1970s immigrant song by Led Zeppelin, and his favorite book is 1984 by George Elwell. Did I say more? In his spare time, Dominic likes to work on cars and engines. At the beginning of the Garden of the Galaxies 2, Star Wars Lord's father, Eagle, is driving a 1978 Ford Mustang Shelby GT500 T-Top. This car is very rare. Only 4,315 were made. This car was so special that director James Gunn took the car home after the movie for his private collection. Dominic, tonight I want to present you with a replica of this Mustang and the great Star Lord. Dominic, as you start your studies next year at Alfred State, I want to share with you some words from the Sir Henry Royce, co-founder of the Royce, Royce Com Company. Strive for perfection in everything. Take the best that exists and make it better. If it doesn't exist, create it, accept anything nearly right or good enough. Dominic, I know you're going to do great things as a mechanical engineer. Mechanical engineering is such an exciting career. You will be at the foremost in developing new technologies for several industries, including transport, healthcare, construction, and robotics. With all due apology, Mr. Sokol, Isaac Asmore once said that science can amuse and fascinate us all, but it's engineering that changes the world. The engineer has been and is a maker of history. Scientists study the world as it is. Engineers create the world that has never been. Millions of people saw an apple fall from the tree, but it took Sir Isaac Newton to ask why. Dominic, I truly believe in my heart that you may you have the intelligence, the drive, and thirst for knowledge to make a difference in this world. I can't wait to see the great things you've accomplished in your life. Thank you again for asking me to be your speaker, and I'm truly honored and wish you the best life can offer. Robin Padetti will now speak for Peyton Jackson. Hi. <laughs> so I'm sorry this is so big, you're gonna have to carry it back to your seat, but you're big, so. Okay, so this is Peyton Jackson, and his story is one of victory over defeat. But before I share that story, this is how his friends describe him. Hilarious but quiet, a sharp-dressed man, great crazy ape player, can take a joke, kind-hearted, a gentleman, and the most well-hydrated student in the school <laughs> who starts each class with the request, can I fill my water bottle? The yearbook letter to Peyton from his family, mom, dad, Pela, and Preston says, Peyton has a gigantic heart, tremendous work ethic, humor, caring spirit, and intelligent mind. As a speech pathologist at Norman Howard, I met Peyton two to three times a week from his first week in ninth grade all the way to his last week of 12th grade. And I think I know him pretty well as he's been open and honest about his struggles in school. He was always motivated to learn and apply strategies to overcome those struggles. However, Peyton, you fought another battle equal to or greater than your academic one. And that battle was against his greatest enemy by the name of, I can't, <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I can't was so much a part of Peyton when I met him, I don't think he even realized that I can't was his ever present nemesis and enemy attacking relentlessly, instilling so much self doubt that Peyton was almost beaten. And that was four years ago. So between then and now, our class involves strategy instruction, academic support, and weapons training to fight I can't. So those two weapons were I can and I will. So this is the first weapon that Peyton learned how to use. Do you remember this? Because you get all of these. Okay, so this was um, something that uh, I threatened a lot. Didn't do too much, right? Did we ever even do this? But this is a, a strategy to um, stop bad habits. And he was a very good natured and let me humor him or he humored me, sorry. So it works for um, stopping smoking, stopping swearing, and stop saying I can't. So you get to have all of these. Okay. <laughs> There's lots more where those can't come. Okay, then um, when faced with I can't, Peyton's battle cry became do it anyway. Like Walt Disney, who preferred drawing to paying attention in school and dropped out or Dave Thomas, the founder of Wendy's. Remember we talked about him and he also dropped out of high school. Dr. Seuss, whose first book was rejected 27 by 27 publishers before he went on to sell 600 million. Like Abraham Lincoln, who lost seven political elections before becoming our 16th president. In other words, Peyton learned there are many roads to success. And these men used the same two weapons, I can and I will. Their winning attitudes defeated I can't something like, if you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win but think you can't, it's almost certain you won't. Life battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man, but sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. So now I'm gonna share just a couple of his um, victorious battles. During COVID and remote learning for an entire year, Peyton defeated I can't with conviction and determination. He never missed a single class with me. In fact, he made extra appointments to tackle schoolwork and deadlines. He was always in dress code, sitting upright in the same blue room and 100% focused on the lesson, except for this one time. The time he lost focus looking away from the screen and I said, Peyton, where did you go? And he said, I was looking out the window. And I said, oh, what were you looking at? And he said, a bird. <laughs> and <laughs> I actually almost cried when, when you said that because it was like one of those first beautiful days of spring and the breeze was coming through the open windows and you could smell new grass and warm sun. And here sat this growing teenage boy inside in front of a screen every day for social studies, science, ELA, writing, and math. No lunch with peers, no social banter, passing in the hallways. Um, and I said, uh, what are you gonna do today when you're all done with this? And he said, I'm going to ride my bike. And from that day on, when we finished during that year of COVID, we'd end our class with, now go ride your bike. And the, um, the threat or the, the reward of bringing a pizza to your house after it was all over. Okay, so Peyton also used I can and I will to beat the oppression of COVID by using that time as an opportunity to get in shape, work out, and really learn about bodybuilding to the point that he wants to pursue becoming a personal trainer as a career. Instead of saying, I can't go anywhere, so I'll do nothing, Peyton said, I can and I will make myself better and stronger, and he did. And then there was this time when Peyton wanted to get a job. And um, he came in, told me he wanted to get a job, but he didn't want to do anything that you had to do to get the job, like interview. <laughs> and so um, at that point, he was almost annihilated by I can't. Um, he said, just no way am I doing an interview. And he was bombarded with an onslaught of I can't attacks. So we watched videos, discussed the how-tos, the do's and don'ts of interviews. We practiced skills from the follow-up phone call to the politician's handshake. You know, we watched politicians and how they did that. And um, together we completed his first application, set up an interview for Saturday at three o'clock at Lowe's. 
and I hoped that I can wouldn't win. And on Monday, he gleefully reported that he went to the interview and got it over with. <laughs> While predicting he could never get that job because he listed this plethora of mistakes that he made. And I said, well, yeah, but you did win because you can and you will and you did go on the interview. A few weeks later, he came in and he said, I got a job at Whole Foods. Somewhere between his first interview at Lowe's and the job at Whole Foods, um, he said that he actually liked going on interviews because um, he was, he said actually, yeah, I got really good at interviewing with all that practice. It was kind of fun. So I can't, took a beating and was once again defeated. Peyton faced his schoolwork with the same mindset. When overwhelmed with simultaneous due dates, complex assignments or allegorical works of literature, he was an easy target for I can't. Reminding him of his many victories, he did one task at a time, sometimes painfully, equipped with I can and I will in each hand. The outcome of these academic battles was placement on consecutive honor rolls for effort in academics, a personal growth award from the math department, and a $1,500 Bennett Interactive uh, Technology Award. These were medals of honor and proof that he can, he will, and he did. So, last story. Right before graduation, Peyton experienced a surprise attack from I Can't. Um, looking forward all year long to the Disney trip, he said, um, I'm really excited about going to Disney, but I don't think I can go. I've never flown before and I'm really nervous about that. And so, since knowledge is power, um, we watched videos of pilot training on simulators for all kinds of emergencies. You know, we took tours of airplanes and um, we watched pilots explain turbulence, the sensation of taking off and landing, and the sounds to expect. But because I had recently flown, I showed Peyton a video on my phone when I, in the plane, flew through the clouds. My video started out in dark, dreary, overcast weather, and then through this fog of white fluff, remember we were doing that, we were looking at, and um, when you got to the top of that, the sky was just infinitely blue. And I told Peyton, I said, you know, I kind of think about that when days are dreary here in Rochester, because we have a lot of them. And sometimes I just think, you know, like, oh, wait a minute, it's gray, it's dark, but right above that is like perfect blue. So uh, this is why it's so good. This is a screenshot of that video we were watching. Okay, there's the wing of the plane. Okay, and here's the dark and the cloud and then the perfect blue. Um, so this is like life. When things look dark and scary and you feel overcast with worry and self-doubt, um, you might go through a cloud like of indecision and in that cloud you really can't see anything. It's kind of like you can't see up, down, right, left. And when you go through life, nobody goes through smoothly. There's bumps and turbulence for every single person in, who's alive. And so, um, Remember that just above those bumps is perfect clarity. When you get to the space you want to be in your future, it's going to be clear and bright and hopeful. So think about your life like that. I'm going to end with a few um, statements just to show you um, Peyton's change of attitude and how he beat the I can'ts. His yearbook um, quote was Thomas Jefferson. And it's, he wrote, if you want something you never had, you must do something you've never done. And then um, snap the rubber band when you feel that coming on. And then um, the last thing, uh, remember I used to ask you, do you know why birds fly? Do you, met, you know the answer? Right there. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> they think they can. Right, that's why birds can fly. Okay. So, these are for you, and I'm sorry it's so big. <laughs> yes. Sherry Schock will now speak for Alexander P. Matthews. Um, for those of you who do not know me, I am Sherry Shuck and I teach 7th grade ELA and writing here at Norman Howard. 
Since I teach middle school, I haven't been asked to speak at graduation before. But Alex, for some strange reason, <laughs> asked me to speak about him tonight. I guess it's because I've known him since he was like four. Um, I was a youth pastor at the church where his family attended, and my daughter, whose name is also Alex, was in kindergarten and fourth grade with this Alex. Um, fast forward a few years, and I got to be this guy's youth pastor for a year. We did some fun things then. Um, then I went back to teaching and ended up at NHS to teach seventh grade the year that he started eighth grade. So I escaped that one. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Although I never got to be his teacher, I was able to tutor him for the past three years. So those are my qualifications for being able to speak about this young man tonight. So here are what I think are Alex's qualifications for awesomeness. Alex is one of the kindest people I've ever met. He greets everyone with a smile and is not afraid to start up a conversation with anyone, like anyone <laughs> he meets. Alex has walked by my classroom every single morning for the past three years, said good morning, and waved at me. This usually progressed to him entering my room and sarcastically saying, what is wrong with you? <laughs> You guys heard this before, yeah. Uh, to me about some silly thing in my room, like a turtle stuffed animal that was wearing a Halloween costume. I don't know why that's weird. Um, all right, so now I'll say it. Because you see that all the time. It's your thing, man. All right, so when he would say that, which is not what I do right now, <laughs> um, I would say, nothing's wrong with me. And then he would say, that's right, you're awesome. And as he headed to homeroom, he'd greet my seventh graders and ask them how they were and tell them to have a good day. Some days he would walk by while I was busy and not paying attention, and then my seventh grader, graders would say, Mrs. Shuckles, because they call me that for some reason, um, that nice Alex kid's trying to say hi to you. I don't think they have any clue what grade he's in <laughs> or what his last name is or anything, but he was the nice Alex kid. <laughs> Alex is also a people pleaser. He generally wants to do whatever he thinks others want him to do, and when I ask him why he, answer, why he answers yes to every question I ask him, he says that he just wants me to be happy. So if I ask him, do you like Oreos? Yes, right, yeah, there you go. Okay, now you're participating, good job. Um, do you like to play Pokemon Go? Yes, we played that before. Um, do you like to eat moldy Cheetos? <laughs> see, I gotta see, you don't say no. You can't say no. It's so weird. Yes. So he says yes to everything. Um, he actually told me I was his favorite teacher once, which is weird because I didn't have him as a student. Um, but, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I've overheard him say that to other teachers, so I'm not sure <laughs> how true that is. But at least I'm happy, right? Because you truly want to make people happy. Um, he also takes pride in what he does. He really enjoyed Maker Place and photography classes here at NHS. I can't begin to count how many times he told me that he made an Oreo with a 3D printer. <laughs> and I can still remember the tutoring session when he couldn't wait to tell me about the 3D printed carton of milk that he made to go with it. Alex also loves taking photos. It was wonderful to see his work as he photographed the things that he thought worthy of being remembered. And now as he's working towards learning carpentry, I'm sure he will have stories to tell about the amazing things he builds and the injuries that he incurs. It's, it's just gonna happen, dude, okay? <laughs> I know Alex's family is feeling that same pride about him tonight. They have fought for him to not just survive, but to thrive. They have given him opportunities to ride horses, fix up a cottage, do youth group overnighters, go on every single photo trip ever with the school, ever, and learn to the best of his ability. He has taken advantage of every opportunity given to him and has always done so with that huge goofy smile on his face. <laughs> Alex, tonight your family, friends, teachers, and classmates celebrate you. We take pride in the kind, hardworking, adventure-seeking, and now high school graduating young man that you've become. Congrats, and thank you for the ways that you've spread happiness to all that know you. Melissa Nall will now speak for Jeff McHale.
Hi, I'm Jack's aunt. I remember when you were born. You were 2.4 ounces. You fit in my hand. And now... I don't. <laughs> you don't. That's right. You were strong and determined. You fought and you never gave up and you showed us what a fighter you are and you still do. Jack, you worked very hard and overcame many challenges to get to this point and you have also grown into a kind, respectful, responsible young man who cares about his friends and family. Jack has a great sense of humor, if you know him. His wit and sarcasm is always on point. He can be very cheeky sometimes, but he never means any harm. He just likes to have fun and make people smile. Jack is one of the most talented and passionate people I've ever met. He's achieved so much in his short life, and I'm sure he will achieve even more in his future. He is an inspiration to me and to everyone who knows him. I am so proud of you and love you so much. You're a miracle and a blessing to our family. And you have shown us through courage and resilience what determination looks like. I'm very proud of you. Speaking for Ava Parker is Tammy Hurlbut. First of all, I kind of wish one of these amazing teachers were speaking here and I was out. You guys, uh, just first of all, seniors, you guys should give these amazing teachers and this faculty. You guys have changed Ava's life and I love and you've changed each and every one of their lives as well. So, okay. My name is Tammy and I am lucky enough to be Ava's mom. I'm honored to be her choice for voice, uh, of voice for this special day. Um, I know I only had a couple minutes to sum up who and what Ava Parker is, which is impossible. So I did my best and I did what moms do and I wrote a poem. <laughs> It's called, You Just Wait and See. When I was carrying Ava, I was told, be prepared for her not to be strong enough to survive. She won't survive on her own. She'll be sent to a NICU. Oh yeah? You just wait and see. When I woke up from surgery, there was a strong, thriving, beautiful baby girl ready for the world. Fast forward. She isn't walking, she isn't talking according to our boxed in parameters. Oh yeah? You just wait and see. Elementary school, her speech isn't fluid, she's stuttering, who knows if she'll ever overcome it. Oh yeah? You just wait and see. Eye surgeries, hearing tests and devices, spinal concerns, you name it, it was thrown in her path. All these things they said will hold her back. Oh yeah, you just wait and see. She is strong, she fought for life and has fought to walk her own path ever since. It isn't paved in the traditional sense, it is better. Since day one, she has had boulders and sometimes mountains in her way, and she has worked and found a way to defeat them all. So today, as I stand here, seeing her in a robe and a tassel, I have zero doubts that she will thrive and continue climbing mountains and proving them all wrong, because that's what she does best. So what does the future hold for Ava Lane Parker? You just wait and see. <laughs> Trish Ryan will now speak for Kylie Page Pilcher. I'm very honored to be speaking for Kylie Pilcher. I met Kylie two years ago for the first time in my Algebra II class. I knew immediately that Kylie and I were going to bond. 
when I discovered we share a common love for our pets, our cats. Animal lovers tend to be kind, compassionate, loyal, and dedicated people, and we find each other. And Kylie is no exception. When I got to know Kylie, I immediate re immediately recognized them for the intelligent, kind, gentle, and truly unique person that they are. A bit of an old soul, but yet young and eager to learn. Kylie came to Norman Howard in their ninth grade year. Their journey to NHS, like many of our students, had been quite challenging. Well, that all changed when they got here. Apparently, when Kylie first visited our school, they came home very excited and relayed to their parents that they knew this was a school where they would thrive and be true to themselves. How did they know this? Well, when Kylie went into the main office, Miss Hepler had a baby kitten in her desk drawer <laughs> that she was caring for. For those of you that don't know, Miss Hepler cares for rescue cats. Kylie went home very, very excited, repeated over and over again, Mom, she had a cat in the drawer. <laughs> Kylie knew that they had come to a unique place that was kind, compassionate, accepting, and had cats. Well, Kylie did find their way at NHS. They found safety and empowerment. They found their people, developed relationships, and got involved in many, many things along the way. Kylie truly soared academically and socially. Kylie embraced what our school stands for, be yourself. Kylie tried it all, like yearbook club, sub shop, student council, drama club, even helped create a new club, the D&D &D club. Kylie tried skiing for the first time. They learned to love nature at NHS through hiking. Kylie pushed through many obstacles and took risks they regained their fearless spirit. Along this journey, Kylie found their true talent, a passion and love for art and photography. Kylie discovered this through their consistent participation in Bruce's Photography Club for all four years that they attended NHS. To quote Kylie's mom, Kylie entered average and became exceptional. Well, this exceptional student is headed off to RIT to further their passion for photography. They were awarded an RIT Presidential Scholarship to attend. Kylie was also inducted into the National Honor Society for High School Students. Kylie, your teachers, friends, and of course your parents are so proud of you. You have accomplished so much. As you enter this next chapter in your life journey, college, I know that you're going to continue to soar, discover, learn, and connect. Be true to yourself, the cat lover that you are, kind, compassionate, dedicated, loyal, and truly unique. I wish you all the best. Susan Snyder will now speak for Roman Andrew Snyder. I don't know about any of you, but I missed lunch and it's dinner time. And all I keep thinking is if I take three lefts, will Bernadette give me some Skittles? I don't know, <laughs> I'm just wondering. <laughs> My name is Susan Snyder, and I have the honor of being Roman's mother. I was given a, a friendly reminder recently by Rosemary Hodges that I only have two minutes, but really two minutes. I don't think I've ever done anything in my life in two minutes, but I'm going to try. After 18 years, how do I fit everything into two minutes? There's never enough time. I think it's something we're all plagued with. And if you look at market standards, 
If something is in high demand and has low availability, its price increases, meaning it's more valuable. Money has valuable. Money has value, I'm sorry. We spend it on our wants and our needs, which by the way, is highly confusing for kids. At least my kids anyway. Mom, I need this video game, right? I think everyone's probably heard that before. So if we apply this same logic, then it is also to realize that time is also valuable. It's a commodity, and just like money, we have to decide what we spend our time on. So today, I would like to talk about Roman's journey and what he has spent time on in the last 18 years. He, of course, has spent 15 years in school, and with that came an education and now a degree. That was a valuable way to spend his time, even if he didn't always value doing his homework. But it got him where he is today. He's a very smart young man who sometimes astounds me with the things that he knows. School wasn't always easy for him. He's had struggles along the way. And one of the wonderful qualities about Roman is that he continued, he persevered, he never gave up, as stressful as things were sometimes. He used his time wisely. He survived, he grew, he learned and he changed. It was a valuable experience. Additionally, in the past 18 years, he spent time trying new things. I like to call it opening a new window where you take a sneak peek into new things that can open up into lifelong adventures and friendships and new opportunities. He was never afraid to try things, new things. No, wait, I take that back. He was afraid, he was, he was anxious but it never prevented him from moving forward and taking that step. Now, the definition of brave is trying something when you're afraid of doing it. And so to me, he is brave. <laughs> I know, I'm trying not to make him cry. He said, Mom, I had you come up because you're gonna cry before me, so it'll make me look better, so. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying, but um, uh, so some of the other adventures in his life, he joined Cub Scouts and he played violin and he took guitar lessons and hip hop dance class. And yes, he was the only boy there, but he has a spirit about him that you cannot help but be drawn to. He once brought his guitar to sell popcorn for the Scouts and he didn't know one darn song but it didn't prevent him from trying. And to be honest, he sold a lot of popcorn that day. <laughs> now, I don't know if it was people just being drawn to the noise or people wanted him to meet his quota so he would move on, but <laughs> we'll never know. But it doesn't even matter because he had the time of his life. It brought him joy and that has value. It was time well spent. He also took gymnastics and karate and played baseball, lacrosse, football, and hockey. And he practiced and he worked hard at hockey and won many awards, one of which was an award for the hardest shot going at 79 miles per hour. I never asked him to clean his room when he was practicing hockey, just so you know. Um, but he understood and demonstrated the necessary drive of persistence and practice and effort to obtain his goals. He used his time in a valuable way. He participated in school chorus and had several solos. He joined a show choir and performed at the Lilac Festival. He also joined my personal favorite, which was Drama Club. He got the role of Conrad Birdie. And I can still remember his <laughs> practicing his Elvis lips. <laughs> and his Elvis hips in the mirror over and over again. He got the part, he set a goal, and he got it. I was so thrilled and I loved every minute of those performances. But honestly, there's another role that sticks in my mind even more. He was cast as Papa Ogre in Shrek and it was a smaller role. So, you know, he had to play some other roles as well. 
and he was cast as a tree. He honestly, <laughs> he was the best tree I've ever seen in my life. I, I don't know how he did it because he didn't have any lines, right? So, but he engaged the whole audience and stole the spotlight. He was swaying with the breeze and he was just living his best life up there. And even though it was a small part, he made the most of it. He didn't belittle the part or complain or begrudge or blame anyone else. He graciously accepted it and was happy with it and then excelled at it. It was an impactful lesson for us all. He spent time in that play, his, spent, his time spent in that play had value. He's now going off to his next venture of becoming a culinary chef. And I have no doubts he will excel and succeed. I wish I had tasted some of his baking, but he always brings it in here and gives it to everybody else. So I really, you know, just kidding. He bakes me stuff. It's good. <laughs> He's been cooking for a while now. And uh, I, I do remember this one time. He had me tape him. Now this was a long time ago, okay, so no judgment here. But he had me tape him to make an online cooking show. Now he was wearing no shirt. And when I said, Roman, you know, it's kind of inappropriate. You know, you can't go online with no shirt on. He put duct tape over his pecs. <laughs> he made it family friendly. God, God bless him. I know he will succeed. He will find a way. He knows what it takes to achieve his dreams. And with Roman, it's not just about spending his, his time wisely. He does it with love. He does it with compassion. He's not just kind, but he acts upon that kindness and he does something with it. He's generous. He values time spent with friends and family over material goods. His heart is shining and bright. It makes him happy to make other people happy. And you were right, I'm crying before you. He makes us laugh. He fills our lives. I spent nine months caring for him and 18 years caring for him. And it was time well spent. I got a valuable gift and I call him Roman. Time is fleeting and I hope you make your moments count like he did. Thank you. Speaking for Anders George Swanson is Christine Bologna. <laughs> the first thing I'd like to just say is how touched I am by everything that people have said. It's really quite amazing, you know, so much love in this room. Um, it's an honor for me uh, to be here with you in recognition of all our graduates, um, and especially in support of Anders. I'm his favorite aunt, right? <laughs> I, I stole that from you. Um, <laughs> Um, I don't have a lot of funny anecdotes to share. Um, just some things that I wanted to say to Anders that I'm hoping will resonate with him while I have his attention, and um, and also may resonate with um, some of, some of you. Um, first, I wanted to say that I I had the honor of attending the senior class dinner at Shadow Lake. And one of the things that really stuck out in my mind was the genuine um, joy and affection that everyone had for one another. And I really hope that as you move forward and your life scatter, 
um, and your career plans change, that you'll be able to hold on to some of that affection. Um, it's easy to lose track of each other, and there really is something to be said for being able to say, you know, like, I knew Anders when, um, and still be able to say it, I know Anders now, still now. On um, the way home from Shadow Lake, um, Anders and I stopped at the cemetery, um, and it was a short, important visit with his father, and um, there were stars at the dinner. I don't know, you remember on the table. And we left some of those stars um, at the gravesite on his dad's gravestone. Um, believe, hope, dream, achieve. And they were tiny mementos uh, from the night's celebration. And it, you know, it's not a, a celebration not unlike tonight um, that helps to mark um, a family's triumph. And I think. That's really what graduations are. They're, you know, they they're for the graduate, but they really do mark a family's triumph. I've uh, known Anders now uh, since the beginning, <laughs> and I've known his family before then. I guess I qualify as being old. Er, <laughs> I have a little, I have a little natural silver in my hair, and I've had time to reflect upon the strange twists of fate that the random kind of walks of life provide and how life leads us places and down paths we never dreamed we would follow and yet we do and as we journey through that time, we really come into our own. And uh, so for example, I'll use myself as an example, I was born on Thanksgiving. And in fact, family lore has it that I ruined the first Thanksgiving. <laughs> I didn't plan it that way. Things happen, birth. Um, but that small twist, in, uh, twist of fate set in motion, I think, to a great degree, um, the tone and purpose for my life. Um, I lived a life, I think, of Thanksgiving of gratitude. Um, but of course, um, the course of my life didn't just happen. Right? Um, it wasn't determined by fate or luck or being born on Thanksgiving. Um, that was just for a fortuitous seed. Um, the rest was determined largely by choice. Um, other people's choices and of course choices of my own making. Each of us is in, in route, coming into our own, um, discovering our unique purpose and like me, along the path of discovery, you get to choose as you determine and give purpose to your own life. Um, the seeds that are planted um, for all of us, for all of you, perhaps. Um, you are living a life um, of what, <laughs> right? You decide. Um, for Anders, um, we wondered early on what would coming into your own look like for him. Um, who knew that the joy of his birth would soon be clouded by a diagnosis of brain cancer even before his second birthday? Um, what it would mean to go down a path when the survival rate is less than 10% and when you truly are a miracle baby in every literal sense of the word. We just didn't know. But like my being born on Thanksgiving, a miracle, a miracle was set in motion. That was an amazing seed, that miracle. Norman Howard wasn't a given, and as I'm sure some of you also experienced, was a hard-won fight, a fight for equity, and yet, here we are, right? Here we are. And graduation as well. Um, diplomas are wondrous documents, um, but very easy to see them as endpoints, notations on a resume. But as I'm sure many of you are discovering, the diploma that you're earning is just a mere beginning, another, another seed and in large part, not for what you've done, but for what you will do 
for the miracles that are yet to be. And so with your graduation, our expectations rise. What will you do with your miracle? In what direction um, will your purpose take you? Like me, you get to decide, to choose, believe, hope, dream. Those little stars hold big aspirations. They're evidence of a miracle in progress, and not just for Anders, but for all of us to achieve. So embrace the true miracle that you are. Find purpose in your life and the courage to act and make a difference. You have that power within you. And the best part, if you look around, you're not alone. None of you are alone. So congratulations to all of you. And I love you. So we've come to granting diplomas. So I'm gonna ask each graduate to rise as I call your name and come forward when I call your name. <laughs> so you can accept your diploma. Tavion Aquil Anders. And Andrew. We did practice. Dylan M. Baker. Dalen Elizabeth Bump. <laughs> Kaden Chase. Nathaniel Justin Childs. Logan R. Gagan. Lauren McKenna George. <laughs> Dominic Daniel Getman. Peyton Jackson. <laughs> Al 
Alexander P. Matthews. Jack McHale. Ava Parker. Culture. <laughs> Roman Andrew Snyder. Anders George Swanson. very much for joining us for this special celebration. At this time, I would like to invite everyone to join us in the lobby for a reception to celebrate our graduates. Parents and families, we'd also like to let you know that Mr. Mark Richardson will be here taking photographs of our graduates and their families in the theater immediately following our ceremony. If you would like a family photo taken with your graduate, please either stay seated or come back into the theater before you leave. And now I'd like to pass along a message to our graduates. I wish you all, the Norman Howard School Class of 2023, a hearty congratulations on your many years of hard work and best wishes on your future journeys. You are my first graduating class here at the Norman Howard School and I have loved being your principal. It has been a memorable year full of many wonderful adventures. Congratulations to the class of 2023. All the best in all that you do. So at this time, graduates, please rise. You may now move your tassels to the left side. Thank you.